At this point, you've had some experience with the FM synthesis equation. Now it's time to implement this in LabVIEW. I will begin by putting down some sort of generic system values like sampling frequency and the total duration of the signal. And then I will also place my three parameters for the FM synthesis equation. Now, I will begin by creating a vector of samples corresponding to time. And to do this, I will use the ramp pattern generator from the signal processing palette. Also, the reason I was converting that to uh, an integer is because we need an integer number of samples. The ending point will simply be my duration and the starting point needs to be zero. I'll go ahead and create a constant for that, although notice that uh, the default value is in fact zero. And I'll place a free label reminding myself that that's the time vector down there. Next I need to fashion the product 2 pi times the carrier frequency times t. I like to use the compound arithmetic operator here. You can certainly use the two input multiplies if you like, but this way I can multiply all the terms together using just a single node. There's a built-in math constant called 2 pi. and I'll place another free label saying that this is 2 pi FC times T. And I'll give away a part of the fun here by pointing out that I've at this point forgotten to change the arithmetic operator from its default of addition to multiplication, but we'll see the results of that here shortly. That was a control um, shift operation after I had done the compound select there to do that quick copy of the or the compound arithmetic operator. For my front panel control I'm using the harmonicity ratio H and that's uh, the modulation, frequent, modulation frequency divided by carrier frequency. So when I take the product of H and the carrier frequency why that gives me F FM. Now, to actually calculate the sine, we need to do this really on a, a point by point basis. And so this will accept the array of values and compute the sine of each of those values. So at this point, I've implemented sine of 2 pi FMT. And I've multiplied that by my modulation index i. I can then add that to my linear term, 2 pi FCT, and at that point I fashioned my phase function, which I call uh, phi of t usually, and then I can take sine of that result. Let's go ahead and toss in a constant amplitude. And I'll create another front panel control called A. Now if you're really tracking what I'm doing here, you'll notice that I'm making a goof at this point. Everything was actually just fine. I just needed to multiply the end result by amplitude. Hopefully we'll be able to figure that out shortly. So ultimately I want to be able to play this as a sound or view it on triple display. I need a waveform data type for that purpose. 
So the reciprocal operator is how I get my sampling interval from sampling frequency. And if that happens to come up as uh, a control, simply change it to an indicator. All right, let's see how we're doing. I guess I'll use 10 kilohertz for the sampling frequency, duration of one second. Let's place the carrier at concert A. Put in a non-zero value for harmonicity ratio, and let's give it an amplitude of 0.9. So it, we're looking at the time domain plot right now, and that doesn't look very good at all. It's just a constant ramp. So after scratching one's head for a while, it becomes apparent that these need to be changed to the multiply operator. Try that again. That looks good. Then what you all also observe here is that the time domain waveform is going between minus one and plus one instead of corresponding to the amplitude 0.9. So let me put this back to the way I was supposed to have done it in the first place. Now let's give that a try. All right, there it is, 0.9. That looks good. So now, so now I'll switch it over to the spectrum display. And since the modulation index is zero, then we see only the carrier component. All right, as we bring up the modulation index, we can start to see this non-zero sidebands showing up. All right, well, let's take a listen to this. You can enable the play sound checkbox. And the tone will sound pitched as long as you have a harmonicity ratio that's a ratio of integers. So what I've experimented with so far is things like 1 over 2 or 1 over 5. 0 0.707 is the reciprocal of square root of 2. So irrational numbers will give you sort of oddball positions for the sidebands. So let's try pushing this back to uh, ratio of integers again. Again, you'll know as the modulation index, index gets higher, you start to bring in an increasing number of sidebands with non-zero amplitudes. Now notice that since we're specifying harmonicity ratio, that the modulation frequency is calculated for us and so that keeps getting compressed and that's that's why we see that that lower sideband is always staying anchored in the same spot. Now if you listen to this where you have lower frequency response on your speaker system you'll actually be able to hear some of those aliased components showing up at the low frequency end.
again, those sort of small components that you see at the bottom end are actually aliased.